I'm not sure how big of a story this is internationally, but in Canada we're dealing with uh, uh, a tragedy that happened last week of uh, a rural hockey team, young men, um, who were killed in a bus crash. Um, it was a tragedy. Uh, and the tragedy kind of got overshadowed by a pretty offensive um, tweet by a woman by the name of Nora Loretto, I hope I'm pronouncing her name properly, um, saying that, yeah, look at all the white males there, and it's amazing how quickly people respond to when that happens. Now, that was a pretty stupid thing for her to say. Um, I'm the first one to point out that um, white males get a bad rap. Um, it's this seems to be the last group of people that it's okay to scapegoat. Um, and in particular cases, it gets pretty over the top. Like, look at the way that, say, white South African males get to be attacked, or white Southern males in the U.S., or Protestant males in Northern Ireland. It's like, they're just the worst people, and we get to attack them like this. That's taking it way too far. It's uh, scapegoating um, taken to an extreme where you just decide that there's too much privilege in this world, therefore the people who are privileged are bad. And, um, you know, open season, I guess. Now, I'm not saying that everybody's like this. Uh, of course not. Even uh, almost everybody on the what we would call the progressive left um, didn't see it this way at all. And we're just as shocked as anybody else about the way this person decided to grab the headlines, I guess. Uh, overkill type thing, and they, she let a genie out that then turned on her. Um, <clears throat> but it's interesting, though, to see how this sort of thing pans out. Um, first, we have a terrible tragedy. Then we have an outpouring of grief. Then right in the middle of that outpouring of grief, we have this very insensitive tweet by one person. And it suddenly becomes the story about everything. Um, what happened to the grief? It's like somebody switched a light on or off and we all turned on a dime and our emotions then turned to hatred fast. Um, righteous indignation again. I, you know, I like my quote from Aldous Huxley. Um, the surest way to work up a crusade in favor of some good cause is to promise people they will have a chance of maltreating someone. To be able to destroy with good conscience, to be able to behave badly and call your bad behavior righteous indignation, is the height of psychological luxury, the most delicious moral treat. A lot packed into that uh, quote. First of all, it sort of implies that, yes, we really do like to be sadistic towards each other, and these occasions allow us to feed our inner sadist, right? Um, in both cases, because Ms. Loreto got to sort of say something really awful at the most sensitive possible time, and um, got to basically stab people through the heart when that was the when they are at their most vulnerable. Um, this, of course, sets off a reaction. She got to feed her inner sadist through some sort of righteous indignation over the fact that people are all worked up about all these young white males that have been killed. And then, of course, everybody else gets to feed their inner sadist by mobbing her online. She received, apparently, rape threats, death, death threats, um, all kinds of anger and vitriol and all that sort of thing. Uh, also, um, under the rubric, I suppose, of righteous indignation, right? Uh, first, she's feeling righteous indignation over the fact that everyone is freaking out over 14 white males who are killed, where when 14 people get killed in Syria, nobody even notices or whatever. Um, but then suddenly everyone else feels righteously indignant and then they mob her. Um, so we go from a situation where a tragedy happened to 
just an angry confrontation between two sides. It kind of, it almost mirrors the present divide in the United States, which exists actually to a greater or lesser extent in most other countries. Um, the United States is particularly polarized right now, but, you know, there, that'll blow over and, you know, eventually it'll be Canada's turn to be polarized. We were horribly polarized in the 90s. But it's funny how when things go public like this, it inevitably turns into a sort of dialogue or an argument or a fight over who is the more horrible person and who has been the most offensive. Um, who gets to decide these things? Who gets to decide what offensive is? Um, I'm reminded of like Charlie Hebdo where <clears throat> some people decided that because of these cartoons that were offensive um, were unacceptable and nobody was doing anything about it, they would take the law into their own hands and shoot up the offices of Charlie Hebdo because of a sense of righteous indignation, right? You, you can't talk about our prophet like that. That's horrific. Well, okay, but do you walk into a newspaper or a magazine uh, uh, office and shoot everybody? Is that a moral thing to do? Are you acting on behalf of the good in the world by doing all of this? I, I don't think so. That's One gets the impression sometimes that, that these people are glad that people like Charlie Hebdo exist so that you get to feed your inner sadist, right? You, you really want to go on a shooting spree because you're frustrated with your life or with life in general, or you, maybe you're just a violent person or whatever. So you latch on to this. Um, you blame your bad behavior on somebody else. And in fact, all you're doing is you're feeding your inner beast, right? You want to kill people. So here's your excuse now. Let's have a good hate, right? Um, and you get to call that righteous indignation. You get to call that uh, justified anger. Um, but of course, then, the people who are then hurt, say when the West felt the shock of Charlie Hebdo, the West could then decide that it was the hurt party and it was righteously indignant and that, you know, on we go. The spiral of violence continues. Um... <clears throat> or the, not just the spiral of violence, the spir spiral of anger and hatred that really doesn't go anywhere except feed off itself and get bigger until something truly awful happens. Um, what is this? What is it that causes us to turn on a dime like that? What is this that turns grief into rage so quickly? Um, I think it's a combination of things. Um, first of all, as I say, we all have that beast in us, whether we like to acknowledge it or not. Um, the desire to harm other beings seems to be inherent in us. Uh, it's not, it, it needn't be, I guess, dominant. And in fact, I would say that in almost everybody, it is not dominant. And when it comes out, it comes out kind of in a more or less passive sort of way, I guess. Um, as I say, uh, the woman in, uh, in Canada here, the um, Nora Loretto, who made her tweet, she was threatened with death and rape and all this sort of thing, but the reaction hasn't been as bad as it could be, um, considering the depth of feeling. Um, but again, that's kind of an optimistic way of looking at it. The pessimistic way of looking at it is, why does this happen at all? Um, that's anyone's guess, I suppose, but again, I think it may be raw human nature. And it's also the fact that, um, when we're hurt, we go crazy, right? There's nothing more dangerous than a wounded animal. And we are at our most vulnerable and, and at our weakest when we are hurt, damaged, wounded, whatever. So somebody's more likely to go nuts when you strike them when they're at their most sensitive. But see that you got to be careful with stuff like that because, again, sensitivity is used in an offensive sense. Um, you know, you accuse everybody of being insensitive or being offensive or something like that, and then you have some power over them because you can say your acts or your words or whatever are harming me. Um, and you don't get to decide whether or not I'm harmed. I get to decide that. And then I've got power, right? That's, you know, the, the 
conspiracy theories involving cultural Marxism or the Frankfurt School or whatever. It's a calculated offense. Uh, you, you calculate, you deliberately take offense at something aggressively in order to control the other person. Um, which I, I believe that there is an element of that in this story. Um, but Ms. Loretto overplayed her hand. <clears throat> she went way too far. She kind of did the Salman Rushdie thing where she thought she would just be a little bit infamous. And she went, she released a genie that attacked her. And it may have, may have damaged her life. Um, what is all that about? What is it that, that turns our better emotions into nasty ones so quickly. Have you ever seen those funerals that you see on, on television in the Middle East where somebody has been killed, there's a crowd of mourners, but they look more bloodthirsty than sorrowful. They look more, they look more like a lynch mob than a bereft funeral procession. Um, what is that? What at bottom is going on? I think what it is, is we simply don't want to admit that we have this in us and we make excuses for it. We make excuses for our aggressive behavior. We make excuses for our passive aggressive behavior, i.e. Uh, Ms. Loretto, who made her offensive tweet at the worst possible time. Um, and you take it to an extreme and you, again, you see those angry mob type funerals in the Middle East and you sort of say these people are using their grief as an excuse to whip themselves up into a murderous psychotic rage. Why don't you just have done with it and admit that that's what you're doing? Well, who wants to admit that? Um, wouldn't you rather actually look in the mirror and look at what you honestly see? Um, is it so bad to be human? I would say again, the reason why it might be better to look at that devil inside of all of us, at least you're acknowledging that it's there. At least you're saying that thing can take me over at any point. Uh, I can be hijacked by my rage, by my murderous homicidal, uh, impulses that we all have. Uh, if I'm not careful, if I'm not paying attention to what's happening. I think most people don't want to pay attention. I think most people don't want to admit that they have this in them. And who does really? Who wants to admit that? We all want to think that we're better. Um, I, you know, statistically speaking, we all apparently, or most of us believe that we're above average in terms of intelligence. That's impossible, of course, but you know, that's how we think. I think that also deep down, each of us believes that we're probably more moral than the average. Um, we don't want to acknowledge the fact that we have this in us, this impulse to violence and rage and hate. Um, but again, you just ignore it and you, you've simply made it stronger or at least, or, or you've made yourself weaker in terms of be, your ability to deal with it when it does arrive. Um, we are what we are, but our ideas of being a good person or an evil person preclude us from facing that fact that the beast in us may be inherent. And when you don't face that fact, well, look what happens. Next thing you know, you're so hurt that you're tweeting that it's okay, or it's somehow disgusting that um, society mourns the death of 14 white males. Or you're so disgusted by somebody saying that, that you utter threats against her. Um, pay attention to where it's going, I guess, is the lesson to be learned here. Your less noble emotions can take over before you even realize what's happened.